Hello, it's Joni. Welcome. I'm here today to talk about The Tommyknockers by Stephen King. Uh, so real quick, I buddy read this with Stacy from Stacy Stories and Vicky from Chapter 32. I will link both of their channels down below and I would highly recommend you check them out. If you don't already know them, they are both lovely ladies and put out some fantastic co content. Uh, Stacy focuses more so on horror and like science fiction horror kind of stuff. She really likes creature features and like aliens and conspiracy theories and uh, in addition to some other horror -y stuff and, and some other not not necessarily horror stuff. Uh, Vicky reads a lot more broadly. She does like horror, but also nonfiction and historical fiction and just kind of a broad range of stuff. So anyway, those are two of my absolutely favorite booktubers. So again, I will link them down below. Um, I mentioned I wanted to mention that largely because I just would highly recommend buddy reading this with people. It is full of so many like off the wall, over the top, crazy things that I was, I really enjoyed being able to occasionally just like chat with people and say, hey, wow, did you get to this part? Because like, that was interesting. Anyway, on to the actual book. So this takes place mostly in Haven, Maine, a little tiny fictional town. Uh, thank you, Stephen King and your uh, plethora of fictional Maine towns. Um, mostly in, in Haven and just outside of it. Uh, it does touch in some other towns in Maine, some fictional, some not. It starts off with Bobby Anderson, a lady who writes Western novels and lives by herself in this house and on some property just outside of Haven. Uh, she goes walking with her dog on her property through her woods and trips over a piece of metal sticking out of the ground. Uh, turns out that piece of metal is part of a flying saucer and it like does things to her and her dog both. Uh, she ends up like compelled to dig it dig it out of the ground and as she gets more and more of it uncovered it's its area of influence spreads beyond her eventually enveloping the entire town and a little bit outside of it um it's also largely about a man named james gardner uh, usually just referred to as guard he is a longtime friend of bobby's and he is a struggling poet mostly struggling with alcohol uh, he ends up in a very very low point in his life and has a feeling that bobby is in trouble and she really needs help and he uh while she's in the middle of her overly compulsive insane need to dig up this UFO. Um, well, you unidentified buried object. Is there, is there an acronym for that? Um, he, uh, joins the mix there and I'll leave us the like basic synopsis there. So as not to spoil too much, like I said, guard guard is basically the hero of this book and he is very much a flawed character. Um, this book has a lot of themes in it. Some of the bigger ones are, um, addiction with guard and also just like that if you've done bad things or been a bad person that doesn't mean that you can't like then be the hero of your own story or like do a great thing or save the world or whatever you know an important thing i thought that was a pretty good theme in it it also dealt a lot with nuclear power and radiation and i think more so just like um not learning all the facts like or just diving into something and disregarding the consequences of it. Anyway, there were a few times that I thought the themes were a little bit over overly heavy handed. For the most part, that wasn't a big deal though. My overall impression and like thoughts about this book are just how freaking funny it was. Like it, it had so many of those great King elements that I love. The small town that he did fantastically, the crazy, interesting, flawed characters, multi-dimensional characters. Um, Guard I almost had some issues with because he was like, he did some real bad things. Um, more so than things that he did was just like a conversation that he had with Bobby that I think was like a memory of Bobby's that like gave me a bad taste in my mouth about him. But he was meant to be a very flawed character. Anyway, other just like random, this guy's cheating on his wife and this lady has these horrible thoughts. Um, and this, oh man, some super, super interesting side characters in this. And just like crazy interesting crap that happens. Um, I just had a great time reading this. It also had some super cool like ominous fun environment things and terminology uses. The shed people was a lot of fun. I thought the phrase the becoming to describe what was happening to the people in Haven was was really good. The almost cheesy when you're not reading it use of the color green was a lot of fun, like just seeing it peek under a doorway or like coming out of somebody's eyes or maybe doll's eyes. Um, it, oh, it had so many over the top crazy, just weird fun things that I had a good time with. I know that Stephen King is accused a lot of having, as he puts it, diarrhea of the word processor. And also just that like he's Stephen King and they'll just like let him write whatever he wants and they don't edit him so much as they should. Uh, and people especially tend to think that about this book. I've heard it said 
that there's a really good like three to four hundred page novel somewhere in this 750 page book roughly 750 I actually read a paperback copy that was like 747 or something that's beside the point um I highly disagree I recognize that there are a lot of things in this that aren't necessary to the overall plot like I did not need to know how Haven came to be called Haven but like I loved reading about it um I did think it like blended well into the next chapter and like it was totally unnecessary but there are so many things in books that are totally unnecessary like so many subplots that aren't necessary but enrich the story there's very very little in this that I would have been happy having been edited out it just really really worked for me like I said I was just having a blast the entire time I read it a couple small instances of like all right I don't need to read that much more about about the effects of radiation, whatever, though I know it tied very nicely into some of the effects of this UFO. I just loved it. Um, it did have some stream of consciousness in it, which is a little bit weird for me sometimes. It, it didn't bother me overly in this. It wasn't like there wasn't a ton of it. And for the most part, I enjoyed it. And I felt it worked in this book because there was a lot of um, communication like telepathically so it, it kind of worked um there were a few small things in it that I thought didn't quite make sense but like it's a book about aliens I tried to take myself out of it a little bit and not let them bother me um oh just some of the like insanity of of the like crazy objects that are returned into weapons was uh, oodles of fun um I also thought it was a super unique take on aliens uh, it's sort of a body snatchers kind of a thing, but not not strictly. And I just, I don't know, without like spoiling the entire book or I don't think you can spoil an entire book by telling you what happens in it, but you know what I'm trying to say. Without detailing the whole plot all the way through, I can't quite explain it, but I, I've never read or seen a movie or heard of a story that was quite like this. I just had a good time with it. Um, the ending was maybe slightly lackluster for me. But I had so much fun with this that if I had to be like super, super picky rating it, I would give it maybe like a 4.8. Like it was whatever. It's as close to a five star book as most books come for me. I don't give out a ton of five stars, but uh, this is officially one of my favorite Stephen King books and five stars for me. I would highly, highly recommend it. So thanks so much for watching this video. Let me know if you've read the Tommyknockers down below, if you are in the uh, pro or uh, anti Tommyknockers camp. Uh, thanks again so much for watching. I will talk to you all again soon.